Well, we know about the departure point, but direction is the next step that we're looking at. And um, let's talk about the way of the wilderness of Yam Suf, as you and I have learned about that. So the question is, is the road that they are on was supposed to lead them from point A, a departure, let's say, of ours, to the wilderness of Yam Suf. Right. And so if they're coming out of Egypt, they would have been heading in that direction, right? Right, and, and as covered in the film, we know that ways in the Bible are typically named by their destination, so that the way of the wilderness of Yam Suf, which they're said to have taken, would be the wilderness road that led to Yam Suf, or the, the sea that was crossed. And the question is, which road did they take? Which road actually ends at a place called Yam Suf that was crossed? But the Hebrews, when they left Egypt, did not go by the sea route. They were told not to go that direction. They were told not to go that direction. Exodus chapter 13, verse 17 says, when you leave, do not take the way to the land of the Philistines. There were only three options, but now with this one out, according to Exodus, one is now left to two options. One issue that comes up is, is if they were heading on this road through the Wadi Tumalat, which is this little uh, valley here, south of this sandy patch, if they were headed on that way out of Egypt, what would be on Suf? Because the only waterway that's on that way or on that road is Lake Timsa. And the issue with Lake Timsa is, well then if they were told to turn and take a detour and end up on Yam Suf, how is that the road that leads to Yam Suf and also the road that they, or also the sea that they end up after the detour? It seems like it's so small, it's only maybe a couple miles across. And that's the point, that that's the disconnect here, right? Because if they're supposed to be on the way that leads to Yam Suf, and then as we see, they were told to turn and go back. So it's again, it's possible that the reason why Moses turned back here is because there was a huge garrison of soldiers at this point and he couldn't go through there. So he had to turn northwards and go north towards the area where the Yam Suf is located. Their going back is going north in a direction they were told not to turn. That's the problem that I had when, when I was trying to be open to that idea. Right, and that's, that's one of the challenges to the view that puts the crossing at Bala Lake. In fact, James Hoffmeyer says in his interview that it doesn't make sense. But he says, but that's what the text is saying, so that's what I'm left with. Mm -hmm. But that's based on the assumption that Bala Lake is the Yam Suf that was crossed. Mm -hmm. and instead of questioning that assumption, he just says, well, it doesn't make sense, but I gotta go with it because that's what the text says. And part of it is, if uh, Dr. Beitzel is correct that Yam Suf is right there at Lake Timsa, then they're on the way of the wilderness of Yam Suf. Right, so if, if he says this is Yam Suf and they were on a road that went to Yam Suf, well then he, that seems to fit. Yeah. Uh, because it doesn't end up going on the way of the Philistines. Yep. The challenge with Timsa, of course, is that it's so small. How could you be on a road that led, whose destination was Lake Timsa, a, a very tiny body of water, and then you turn back and go through a wilderness that you're trapped in, and apparently a very big detour, and yet you end up on Yam Suf again. This mm -hmm. is only maybe two miles across, so how do you do that at Lake Timsa? It seems like it wouldn't be a really a real detour there. It would be. <laughs> right on the road that led out of Egypt. Because the other part of it then is that they say, well, then later on, but we'll, we'll learn about later, after the sea crossing, the Egyptian army is, you know, destroyed. Uh, a few days later, the Israelites end up camping at the same location. Right, they camp on Yam Suf a second time. Mm -hmm. And so we know it's three days in the wilderness to find water, and then it's, mm -hmm. you know, Mara and Elam, and, and then the wilderness of Sin, and then they're back on Yam Suf. Mm -hmm. And so, it's at least a week's worth of travel, I'd say, and probably more, before they hit Yam Suf again. And so, if that's Lake Timsa, you can imagine seven days of travel to go two miles doesn't really make much sense. Yep. But if you were, if you were on the road that led to Aqaba, if Aqaba was Yam Suf, then it would be the wilderness road to Aqaba, and they could take a detour that ended up coming down and being on Aqaba. And then they, after the crossing, they could travel several more days down and still be on Aqaba. It, it fits that scenario yeah. because Aqaba is so long. It also fits the scenarios of the southern or the northern tip as well. Because if they cross the southern tip, they can come back and camp again at... at if, yeah, maybe they were traveling north. Yeah. You know, most people have them traveling south, but maybe yep. they were traveling north. Yep. And then if they came across the tip, then they could once right. again, camp it. A little bit of a detour at the tip is if they took a detour, a, a significant detour through a wilderness that would entrap them, that doesn't seem to fit 
then ending up at the, at the very tip where the road goes in the first place. Mm -hmm. So that, that doesn't seem to fit as well for that aspect. Because that road is coming across and going down south in the Midian. Right. All right. So where's your detour to? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it doesn't seem like any detour at all to end up at the north end of Akaba. But I've also heard that from some people that there are many Amsus. Right, because the only way you could uh, get around that problem to say they were on the road to Yamsuf and yet they took a detour that ended up on Yamsuf, mm -hmm. the only way you can solve that problem on the, bitter, on the uh, border lakes here is to say that, well, they're all Yamsuf. If there are many Yamsufs, if this was all Yamsuf, then you could take a detour off that road and still end up on a Yom Suf. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the way they try to get around that problem. And the question is, is that really a reasonable explanation or not? Or not? Yeah. Another interesting part about this is the verse that says, oh, why did you bring us out of Egypt to die? Were there no graves in Egypt, you know? Right. So that's, that's at, the, at the dead end, at the sea. The Israelites cry out to Moses, why have you taken us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? Mm -hmm. So we know it's... Uh, at least from their perspective, they're out of Egypt and they're in a wilderness. Of course, that would fit Aqaba well, but Egypt was really the area, to the ancients, Egypt was the area that's in green here, which is the, those areas watered by the Nile River. And so although Egypt controlled other areas, those weren't considered Egypt proper, those were just areas Egypt controlled. So at the near edge of the border lakes, these would all still have been in Egypt. And if you're on the north end of Bala Lake, you're not really in a wilderness. You're, you're right on the main road of, of the ancient world through here. You're, you're on the main road. You're in the vicinity of forts. You're, you're in civilization. You're not in a wilderness. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're not in a wilderness. They're still in Egypt. That doesn't fit the cry that the Israelites make at all. Uh, it might arguably fit down here at Suez, perhaps, or maybe even Bitter Lakes, but it certainly doesn't fit up here in these northern lakes. Because they're not that far. When we think about the distance of uh, the Wadi Tumulad, they're really only 15 miles roughly from home. Right, because they would have, if in the Bala Lake scenario, they start here and they turn and they end up really 15, 20 miles away from where they started. Mm -hmm. That cry of, why did you take us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? That has the sense of, we're out in the middle of nowhere. Why did you bring us all the way out here? And, and that wouldn't have been the case here. They would have been, you know, one day's travel back to their homes. Yeah, and those border lakes with the canals system in between there actually shows you which side of the border they were on. Right, they were on the near, near side. Yeah. So they would have been in Egypt. And, yeah. and, the, and the verse says that the wilderness shut them in, not that canals shut them in or that forts shut them in, mm -hmm. but the wilderness shut them in. Yeah. And so that's, that's the challenge for, for the Bala Lakes. Yeah.